on the road and the Tigers win the tip with the freshman Mike Williams the third controlling the point here is Baker an early touch an early three rims out and Jalen Reed goes over the top for the rebound gets back as Ole Miss and throws it right to Chris Bell the sophomore for Syracuse on a team that is stuffed with sophomores three in the starting lineup or four of them along with Bell Mint Starling and Taylor the two guards can really score it and the transfer from Florida State Naheem McLeod at 7-4 leaves it short LSU starters Jordan Wright the Vanderbilt transfer Carlos Stewart the Santa Clara transfer Baker from Nevada along with Reed and Williams two very talented young players in the lane Williams scores the surprise starter at point guard this year Mike Williams has given LSU a real burst of energy he runs their offense and that's one of the things Matt McMahon has, has really developed an early trust with Williams he doesn't play outside of himself Judah Mintz, Arch's leading scorer, rimming out of two, and it's Reed, the sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, for LSU. Jordan Wright rims out of three. Get used to this pace, because this is how both teams like to play. The Syracuse team that is shooting just 29% from three. They get most of their points around this area, and that's a miss from Justin Taylor, another sophomore. Orange with three empty possessions to start. Williams does not use the Baker screen. Rolls to him, and Baker is denied. There's an early block. McLeod winning that portion of the matchup, and it leads to a Taylor three. And it leads to a Taylor three, and that's, you know, they've got to get him going. He started to get going in that game against Chaminade on the way out of Maui. Only 31% though from three so far this year. Transition big for him if he can find that line early. Baker given a whole lot of space, and Baker rims out another second offensive rebound for Reed. Stewart set up. He can't connect from three, and LSU, which is the much better of the two, typically from deep, very cold to start. Here's Bell. Puts it on the deck. Left it right to McLeod. A happy accident for Syracuse. Tigers run the floor after they make, and it's Wright laying it in. Syracuse slow to get back, and the grad transfer, Jordan Wright, scores it. Well, both these teams, like you've said, Kevin, are going to look to push. They're not great or haven't been executing in the half court against set defenses, but they're both very athletic and very good end-to-end. -end. 18 point per game score, Mintz fakes a two. Bell, maybe their best three-point shooter, is crowded. They want to crowd him, make him put it on the deck. He has to there. Mintz late in the shot clock, drills it. That's a three for Judah Mintz. And he has shot the ball certainly better than last season and certainly better than J.J. Starling. But I think you're Matt McMahon. You can live with that three early for Judah Mintz. It's his penetration you're concerned about. Reed steps inside on Taylor and scores at the sophomore Jalen Reed, who is just oozing with potential. And that's the matchup that has really been problematic. That four position defensively for Syracuse. Telegraph pass by Min Stewart got a piece of it. They got a piece of J.J. Starling, the Notre Dame transfer. Starling right through the hands of McLeod. Bell feeds Taylor and the shot clock reset, which it should not have. Roger Ayers, Ron Groover, Tommy Morris here are officials and Roger Ayers is going to fix this shot clock situation as it's dropped down to 10. That's a play Nahima McLeod's got to be ready. He's got to be a receiver. You know, one of the things with McLeod, he, he's got to make multiple plays. He's not a multiple play guy. You know, he'll block a shot and think the play is over. He doesn't rebound outside of his area. Like, I think there he's going to crash the offensive glass assuming shot. And it was a really nice pass. Vince, a strong drive. Left side, right-handed. No, there's McLeod to clean it up. Shot clock did not reset, and there's a foul at the end of the possession with two and a half to go. Perhaps a little bailout for Justin Taylor on the game's first foul. You know, Syracuse has not been a good rebounding team to this point in the season. They've already given up two offensive rebounds to LSU, but they've gathered two offensive of their own to extend possessions. Bail off a curl. Too strong and Reed has the rebound bounce off his head to himself. Stewart. 
Baker will go to work on McLeod now, and McLeod smothers him, but is called for foul before the shot. So Naeem McLeod already with a blocked shot, picks up his first foul, and will step aside with an 8-6 Syracuse lead in the dome. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. You can feel good. ESPN B Week, the V Foundation, founded by Jim Valvano and ESPN in 1993. More than $353 million in research grants has been issued since then. You can go to v.org slash donate today. Every dime, every penny of your donation will go to cancer research. And that's the key point, the, the one you just made down there at the bottom of that graphic. And I, I will say, you know, there's a gentleman named Shane Jacobson who's the, the CEO of the V Foundation. It is as well run a nonprofit as there is going. And obviously ESPN's help with that is, is a big part of that. That production and that relationship has been so strong, but the V Foundation is so well run. Again, it's v.org slash donate. Whatever you can spare will be so greatly appreciated by those in need trying to beat this disease, which so many folks have been able to beat in part because of the help of the V Foundation. It's knocked away from Mintz. Will Baker has the LSU takeaway, an 8-7 Syracuse lead early, and Mintz is on the deck to punch it to Bell. He's got the big man, McLeod, running the floor. McLeod stuffs it. There's a heck of a play by Judah Mintz because he thought he got fouled. He, he started complaining about the no call. But then he converted the defense and made a heck of a play that led to the points. And a turnover here. Jordan Wright standing on the sideline. You know, Judah Mintz is a hard guy to officiate because he's, he's so good off of the bounce. But a good job just getting square there, forcing a turnover. When you're that size, my friend, doesn't take much to flush it home. These are two of the best defenses in terms of steals in the country, both very aggressive on the ball. Shot fake by Bell, puts it on the deck, and McLeod is there to try to tip it in. McLeod's on the floor and slow to get up. LSU has a five on four here if they can use it. And they still have right open as McLeod was late to get back. It leads to a three buried by the sophomore Tyro Ward, a terrific shooter off the bench. It's not a great shoot three-point shooting team, it's certainly not a volume three-point shooting team, but that's what Ward does. 10 for 22 on his season. Starling McLeod fouled on the dunk attempt this time. Naheem McLeod will shoot two. Tell you what, we thought coming in, Will Baker was going to be the matchup problem for Syracuse in the early going. It's Naheem McLeod. You love his activity. Started with being active on the offensive glass. You get him a dunk on that steal by Judah Mintz. And then there he is just rolling to the rim, being a big target. On the year 14 for 16 from the field coming in. Six for 11 at the line. And McLeod, pretty good stroke for a 7-4 ultra big man. They lost Jesse Edwards to the portal of Syracuse. They bring back most of the team. Joe Girard and Jesse Edwards both transfer out. Edwards, who was an all-conference player, went to West Virginia. And McLeod is not going to put up those kinds of numbers, but his per 40-minute numbers are very good. Only playing 18 minutes a game, averaging 6-5 and about three blocks, and he hits the free throws there. Williams cutting inside. The freshman McLeod is there again to deny and devastate. Starling. Syracuse is four and five for a moment there. Mintz will take it in strong anyway, and the Orange continues to control the paint. Starts with the penetration early by Starling, breaking down the defense. Really nice baseline skip to Taylor. Over to Mintz and another guard breaking down the defense. Baker with a touch out high against McLeod again. Starling's very active on the ball. And LSU is deep in the shot clock with Baker calling for it. They're not using the screen. Deep in the clock, it's Ward a contested. Jekyll is not close. A smothering 28 seconds of defense for Syracuse. And an over dribble by Starling leads to a turnover for Ward. On the run, here's Baker. 
And that's where, again, turnovers can be oxygen to LSU's offense. They're forcing 16 a game. It's an offense that can struggle to score in a half court. You give them life if you turn, over, turn it over, especially the live ball ones. Foul by Williams on Judah Mintz. We look at J.J. Sterling penetrate once more. And here's where two guards who are so good off the bounce can be really tough. I mean, it's just two breakdowns of the defense. Starts with Starling, nice little extra pass from Justin Taylor over to Judah Mintz. And you get a team in closeouts. That's where those two, two guards, Starling and Mintz, can really be devastating. Seat for Starling right now, Kyle Cuff, the Kansas transfers in the game. Benny Williams and Malik Brown off the bench for Syracuse as well. Mintz trying to bully his way to the line. The fouls against LSU's Wani Wilkinson. It's interesting, talking to Matt McMahon today, he said, look, I know Mintz, Judah Mintz can make a three-point shot. He said, our concern is him drawing eight and a half fouls per 40 minutes. Judah Mintz is attempting eight free throws a game. And it's not just the points that he puts up from the line, because he's a 77% free throw shooter. It's the foul trouble he puts your team in. And so much of a game, a Syracuse game, is how Judah Mintz is officiated. He is so good at drawing contact and accentuating the contact. 20 points and four of the first six. He's got seven tonight. The lead is four for Syracuse, which nearly had a takeaway. Cuff stepped out of bounds. What are you noticing on this side of the floor right now? LSU's offense against Syracuse defensively. They've been very aggressive in denial. And, you know, even when Naheem McLeod was out there in that drop coverage, his length covers up stuff around the basket, which can afford those guys on the perimeter to be more aggressive, to be more in denial. Derek Fountain's on the floor for the first time for LSU. Trey Hannibal as well, and Hannibal muscles it in through the contact of Malik Brown, the redshirt senior off the bench. And that's where Brown doesn't give you nearly the rim protection as McLeod. Mintz again. And Mintz once more draws a foul. It's a lot easier said than done, but you have got to go vertical with Judah Mintz on that penetration. He's so quick. I mean, he's, he's got such a good first step. He's really long and athletic. Went through that NBA draft process over the summer. Decided to come back at the 11th hour. I mean, it just uh, it went down to the last moment, him deciding to come back to Syracuse. You like the call for him to come back for another year? I do. Throws it away there. What needs to improve about his game this year? We know about the shooting, but what else do you see? He's got to be, become a better decision maker. And, and there are times where, you know, defensively, like you've got to make him defend. You've got to make him work on that end to sort of take some of that legs from him offensively. And he goes in and out defensively. Trey Hannibal, double team, manages to get rid of it in the air. Here's Stewart on the drive. Stewart is blocked by Brown. An offhand rejection, the fourth Syracuse block of the game at a two point orange lead. The ability to protect your basket, huge in this game against a driving team in LSU. Chris Bell coming over, Malik Brown doubling up. Tonight is part of the inaugural ACC-SEC Men's Challenge, a matchup that would be uh, pretty good in football and is getting better and better in basketball. Clemson and Alabama, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, over on ESPN. The first edition of the ACC SEC Challenge and ACC that's hoping to grow a little bit this year Chris and an SEC that the last few years has really established itself as as deep a league as there is in America. I had a chance to see Clemson at that tournament down in Asheville of course Joe Girard from the Syracuse guard now playing for Clemson slow start to the year shooting the basketball for Girard he got it going actually in the championship of that tournament. 
First sign of zone here from Syracuse. Out of the timeout. LSU very late to get into the teeth of this 2-3. And a deflection by Starling with two and a half to go. The mix so far for Red Autry in the first six games, man-to-man -man versus zone. How do you like the way he's mixed and matched defenses? I like it. I, I actually think their man-to-man -man defense has been better than maybe the numbers would indicate. I think part of that is the tempo they're playing. Stewart all alone for the offensive rebound off a miss by Wright. Here's Fountain who ran into Cuff, tried to draw the charge. No call either way. Brown is high out on the... George Washington transfer Hunter Dean. Four to shoot for LSU. It's Hannibal late in the clock. It's got to be Hannibal. Didn't get the rim. Dean did on a follow. The shot clock reset, but Brown had the LSU rebound. But that's the other problem, Kevin, with their defense is th they've been a bad rebounding team. They haven't finished possessions. I mean, even there, no points for LSU, but three offensive rebounds to keep the possession alive. Kyle Cuff Jr., the sophomore transfer from Kansas. Syracuse team that is fueled by second-year players in a steal. A takeaway and a break. Stewart stuffs it. Carlos Stewart began his career at Santa Clara. He is from Baton Rouge. And LSU really prioritized homegrown talent in the transfer portal. And against this defense, they're too plugged up. You're not going to be able to back down like that if you're starling into a crowd. Cuff. Left it well short. Offensive rebound to Brown and snatched by Fountain. Orange have gone about three minutes without a point. And this physical game has not seen too many fouls whistled. Just one against SU so far. Right, right through the body of Cuff. There's the second foul as Cuff reached around. Kyle Cuff Jr. picks up the personal. But here, Copeland's going to check in for the first time for Syracuse. Chris Bell as well. Something you didn't always see in the Jim Beheim era. Nine players play in the first half for Syracuse, which would sometimes be only seven deep in some of Jim Beheim's seasons. A little bit deeper, a little bit more faster paced, as you said, for Syracuse. Still a team finding an identity. Seven games into the Adrian Autry era. Trey Hannibal will draw the foul. Copeland just in the game, picks up personal. Well, the reality is playing man-to-man -man takes more effort. It takes more energy. Uh, and so you're, if you're going to play it the way that Adrian Autry wants it played, you, you're going to need to go into your bench a little bit. You know, the other thing, too, Kevin, like I think he's still trying to find guys who can do multiple things. They've had a lot of one-dimensional guys in the early part of this year. Like, if, if Chris Bell is not making threes, what does he do? You know, how do you impact winning? And I think he goes, Adrian Archery's gone to that bench to try to, you know, continue to try to figure that out. They haven't been a great three-point shooting team. They haven't been a great low-post presence team. They get a lot of their points from attacking with Mintz and Starling. And right now, Mintz is off the floor, and Syracuse is very deep in the shot clock with no forward movement. It's a long two brick by Starling. In the Tennessee Gonzaga games, we saw too many of those types of possessions for Syracuse. Well, and from Starling in particular, he takes too many tough shots. Right. LSU with four reserves in the game right now, along with Stewart. Right, nice drop off. Fountain finishes. And a really nice cut from behind the defense by Fountain. Really a smart player off of the ball. Tigers have trailed most of the game on a 7-0 run. Copeland a difficult layup. Here is Stewart on the LSU run out. Stewart hopping oh, in, into traffic. Fountain's there for another offensive rebound for the Tigers. Somehow there was not a tie-up or a foul until the very end, and there's a Syracuse personal. Roger Ayers has a foul at the end of all of that against Benny Williams. And they are letting him play, like, call the first foul. I mean, they're... <laughs> 
Bell could have been called for a foul on there too. Listen, we've always said in the ACC SEC challenge, throw the records out the window. We have always said that. Yes. In all 11 minutes and 20 seconds of this competition, which will continue with the men's games tomorrow. Women's ACC SEC Challenge wraps Thursday. Jordan Wright breaks a three, and Williams is first to the ball for LSU, which has been great on the offensive glass. And then the Tigers throw it away. You know, Syracuse, they play 2-3 zone on under out of bounds. It's a default. And I actually think it, it gives them an opportunity in this game. Again, LSU, like in that game against Nichols, they lost at the buzzer. Nichols zoned them the whole game. Wake Forest zoned them the entire second half. I think zone is good against LSU. Four and a half without a point for Syracuse. That trout is over on a three from Chris Bell. But his feet said he is a deadly three-point shooter. Reed over dribbled it. McLeod's back on the floor. Syracuse has the takeaway. Here's Benny Williams. It's not a good shot. A long two early in the shot clock. And Adrian Autry immediately goes to his bench for Justin Taylor, perhaps to get Williams for that reason. And we'll find out at the under eight. Tigers just one for seven from three in the game. Eight for 22 overall. Another missed three, and Reed cleans it up. The ninth offensive rebound for LSU on 15 missed shots. It's a 60% offensive rebound rate early in the game. In the mince, too strong, right with the rebound. Look at the tempo LSU's trying to play with right again. Williams high points it, and LSU is screaming for a goal 10. They will not get it, and we will step aside. Well, Chris Bell, when his feet are set, he is a deadly three-point shooter. You cannot be off of him on penetration. And then how about this on the other end? Jalen Reed, send it home. Matt McVeigh's LSU team has been rebuilt by transfers this year. They are still without another major one, though, and they're hoping to get Jalen Cook back. But without him, LSU's become a little bit of a bigger team. They're relying less on ball movement, on point guard play. They're dominating the glass right now against the Syracuse team that does have some height. And a lot of it coming with Naheem McLeod off the floor. And there is the aforementioned Jalen Cook, who's a 20-point-per-game score at Tulane last year. Began his career at LSU. This is a second-time transfer. The NCAA denied his appeal to play immediately November 1st. LSU is appealing that decision. And about a month later, they're waiting on the results of that appeal. So the Tigers have taken on a little bit of a different tone without him. They're running off it's more through this guy, Baker. Oh, denied by McLeod and Taylor. It's a shot clock violation. What do you miss with Jalen Cook besides the high octane scoring if you're LSU? Well, you miss his experience. I mean, you're playing a freshman in Mike Williams at that position, and he's been serviceable, but he's not Jalen Cook. And so you miss that experience, the scoring, the ball handling, the decision making, late game stuff, late shot clock stuff. He's just a dynamic scorer and an experienced player. J.J. Starling fouled, and as with most of these appeals, it is still a mystery as to when there might be a ruling, what the ruling is based on. Not all two-time transfers are approved by the NCAA. Cook started his career here when Will Wade was the coach. Very good player at Tulane, was first-team all-conference player there. He's practicing, he's traveling, he's still sitting, waiting, wishing for an opportunity on the court. J.J. Starling hits the first of two. You know, this, this waiver thing, you, you can't have it both ways. You, you know, like, coaches complained when we were getting multiple transfers. But when it's their guy, they want the waiver granted. And I'm not saying there aren't sad stories out there. Now, Jalen Cooks would not be one of those. But, you know, not all of these are, are equal, obviously. 
But I think the NCAA is looking at, at it like that because they were asked to. Teams do not have to make the information public as well as to why they apply for certain waivers. So as Menstraw is in a blocking foul, it's still something that's going to frustrate fans. If it's your team, if it's another team, you don't understand it. There's a lot that goes into it. It is a frustrating process, I know, for folks, but it is the process right now. Well, the, the interesting thing about Jalen Cooks is he started his career at LSU. And, of course, you had the embarrassment that was Will Wade and that whole situation. He goes to Tulane for the two years, like you said. Now he's back at LSU. So his situation's a, a little bit different. And, you know, ultimately, is his transfer hurting Tulane? Maybe, maybe not. It's certainly not hurting LSU because he's trying to play now again at LSU. Mike Williams, who's had to play a lot in his absence, just picked up his second foul. As Mintz rolls a couple of free throws home, Syracuse is back in front. Has not been a crisp offensive display for either team. Earns at 30%, Tigers at 35%, one for eight from three. As Bell knocks it out of bounds from right. That man told us before the game, our assist rate is like at an all-time low for when I've been coaching, four assists right now on nine made field goals. Why is the ball movement not there? Well, Will Baker's been taken out of the game. And not only does he score, he does a lot of facilitating of their offense. In the corner, Stewart. That would have been an assisted basket from Hannibal. Reed with another offensive rebound for LSU. 11 of those. Right, another missed three. Baker, and a foul underneath. That will go against Will Baker. Tell you what, Syracuse is lucky that of these 12 offensive rebounds, LSU has only two second chance points. And a lot of it is they're kicking those offensive rebounds out for three, and they're not making those. They're one of 10 from three. But at some point, you know, that water's gonna meet its level, and that offensive glass is gonna become problematic for Syracuse. It's a one on one situation here. Roger Ayers is walking over to the scorer's table for some confirmation. Good to see who should be shooting the free throws. Judah Mintz is ready to do so. If it was a question, now it's Judah Mintz. I'd try to shoot the free throws too. He's already shot four and made them all. And Mintz will get the second. Syracuse coming off a Maui Invitational where they lost to Tennessee 73-56 and Gonzaga 76-57. And had a 49-point win over Division II Chaminade in the finale. Mintz really struggled against Tennessee at 22 against Gonzaga. And then in the big win over Chaminade, more of a facilitator. Five assists, only took three shots. He has been the scorer for Syracuse this year. Justin Taylor with the oranges fifth foul. Well, part of it in that Tennessee game with Mintz, he was in foul trouble. And that's why I, I think you've got to go after him. You've got to make him defend. Hasn't picked up a foul yet tonight. Inside Reed. The cloud is there, and Reed's able to finish all the same. Third basket for Jalen Reed. He is so talented, Jalen Reed. Guy who originally signed with Florida, and then when Mike White was, was let go from there, reopened his recruitment, ends up here at LSU. 6'10 with guard skills. McLeod with a catch. McLeod over Dean. A whole lot of contact there and no foul call, and then LSU throws it away. If this game's going to become a crisply played basketball game. It will probably have to happen in the second half. Yeah, it's a foul. There's no question. Mintz eschews the McLeod screen and Mintz is fouled again. 
Oh, this is Matt McMahon's worst nightmare right now. I mean, Judah Mix has taken almost half of Syracuse's free throws on the season. I mean, his ability to get to the line is prolific. And a lot of it is his athleticism, his ability with the ball. He's very deceptive. He's good, obviously, using the ball screen, but he's very good at rejecting it. He's very good against drop coverage. Like, I think so many guards have worked and worked against drop coverage that they've become so much better at playing against it and creating that two-on-one. But he's also good at selling it. And, and it's, you know, how he's officiated is a big part of Syracuse games. Matt McMahon mentioned the eight free throws a game. He felt like they could not give him. Right now he is eight for eight. Syracuse has hit six shots from the field and 12 from the line and leads by four. Ward, the brick wall of the cloud cuts him off. And Stewart misses a three. Dean fights for the offensive rebound. LSU wins it. Stage up all over again. Missed three, offensive rebound. Usually that ends with another miss, though, for the Tigers. Right. And there's a make. And that's their game. And off of those offensive rebounds, those threes are open for a reason. I think you got to start driving that basketball. It's your LSU. This is their second basket after one of the 12 offensive rebounds. Starling drives. Starling misses. And Starling picks it back. Shot clock didn't reset. It's down to eight. It's Bell stepping in. And he has not been the same off the dribble as he has as a catch and shoot three point. Uh, and it was a good closeout by Jordan Wright to make him take that dribble. LSU without Damian Collins, a 6'10 junior from Kentucky. Dean getting some more minutes in his stead. And Dean turns it over to travel. The uniforms look good. The basketball so far, not so much. The lead is two for Syracuse here, the JMA Wireless Dome at Snowy Central, New York. The buzzer. Uh, well, Judah Mintz has been the story tonight, guys. He's taken twice as many free throws as the entirety of LSU's team. He's got 13 of Syracuse's 27. Syracuse had six shots from the field, Chris. Six for 23 from the field, and yet they're winning the game. Yeah. And they've given up 12 offensive rebounds. It's been a strange first 17 minutes, <laughs> fair to say. No field goals at about 520 now for the Orange. Mintz driving again. Mintz will pass out of it this time. Starling, no. He's only hit one three on the year. And then, you're not going to believe this, folks. You're really not. Judah Mintz was just fouled. Your personal foul, number six. Jordan, Jordan Wright. Wright. Syracuse is in the double bonus, and Mintz will get an automatic two more. I mean, he really is like a running back finding the hole. I mean, that, that drive there on the kick out to Starling... That defense is trying to collapse, and he's just so shifty when he gets in there. And with the way that J.J. Starling has shot it, good job assuming a miss and gathering the offensive rebound. Some guys, man, especially scorers like Mintz, they just have a knack for getting to that foul line. And he's got two more. Ten for ten from the free throw line for Judah Mintz. Syracuse, a team which is... Historically had some trouble shooting free throws. Is perfect on 14 tries. Last week against Tennessee, they were 8 for 17 at the line in a loss. And there's a foul on high against Starling. That's the sixth on Syracuse. J.J. Starling's first. Will Baker's on the bench right now with two for LSU. Tyrell Ward has two fouls. Mike Williams has two. No Syracuse player for Adrian Autry with more than one. That's what I'm saying. It's not just the points that Mintz puts up from the line. It's the foul trouble he puts your team in. Stewart driving it into Mintz, who does not have a foul and holds up brilliantly there. Tried to poke it away from Mintz. Tried to bump him from behind. Taylor spinning, waiting. All kinds of trouble. The pass too tall for Mintz, who just barely kept it in the front court. Orange avoids the turnover. And they'll reset with two to play and ten to shoot. 
Why not Mince again as the go-to guy? Ah. It's, a it's a field goal! The first in about six minutes for Syracuse. And a great look to Taylor, the shooter. You can't leave him. Leaves Brown wide open. Brown defending on Reed. That foul will be a continuation foul. Ron Gruber delayed before counting the shot. Nice job here. He looks at Taylor. Because Taylor's that shooter, you got two guys going to Taylor. Help from Jordan Wright coming over late. And a dunk from Malik Brown. And some vociferous boos from the Orange Clad folks as Reed finishes a three-point play. Hannibal and Wilkinson will return for LSU. Stewart and Ward take a seat. Ninety seconds in this first half, which has been dominated at the foul line by Syracuse. Fourteen made free throws, seven made field goals. Starling. Taylor fakes it into a mess of traffic. Vince will give it to Taylor on the left wing. No good on a three. Brown high flying the deflection. And Mintz will throw it right to Reed. LSU always looking to run. This oh, Reed is stuck by the rim. Stuck it on the front of the iron. And now Bell way off the mark. Let's see if this chaotic sequence will continue. With a grand transfer right, yeah, good time it out. will not. Good, good timeout. You go two for one. What a... I don't know what to think of that last exchange. Thankfully, we have 30 seconds to try to sort it out. <laughs> My word. Sprite moment. <laughs> Judah Mintz is on tonight. I mean, he's been by far the best player on the floor. He's looked like a pro, and he's done it really started off the bounce. I mean, he has gone right by this LSU defense. And oftentimes, we talk about a shooter being in a zone. You can get into a zone driving the ball. But then they lose him here. I mean, how you lose the best player on the floor and leave him that wide open, I have no idea. 25 on the night. He has just been dominant. He has scored 18 of the last 20 Syracuse points over a 9 minute, 34 second span coming out of that timeout. The only basket Syracuse has scored in the last nine and a half minutes that was not scored by Judah Brown, or Judah Mintz, was assisted by Judah Mintz, the dunk by Malik Brown. So every Syracuse basket or free throw in nearly a 10 minute span, Judah Mintz has had something to do with. Game high lead of 13 for Syracuse out of the timeout LSU. He's thrown it all over the place. 10 to shoot for Ward. Trey Hannibal off the bench. Into the corner, a step in for Wright. McLeod is there. Wright lays it up, and Wright scores it. Jordan Wright, six points on the game for the grad transfer from Vandy. It's Trey Hannibal now who draws the Judah Mintz assignment. LSU shape-shifting defenses here. Starling. A cloud of its hit. No. It's going to be LSU ball. Well, it, it, the shape shifting, whatever it is, I mean, they are matching up to your point. They're in some sort of a zone, but it, it didn't stop the penetration. Again, I mean, easy access to the middle of the lane for J.J. Starling. What can LSU do better with the ball? On offense? Or yeah. They just look so uncomfortable. And again, they're not this refined offensive team. A steal for Starling. He's got Mintz running with him. Starling trying to take it himself. Hannibal emerges from the fray. LSU's got numbers here. Four on two. Right with space. Another miss three. One for 14 for the Tigers in the game. And here comes Mintz. And Mintz is going to draw a blocking foul. In a year where it's very difficult to draw a charge, Judah Mintz draws a foul on Hannibal. I mean, that's close. Like, I, you know, his foot was, it started on the restricted arc, and then he lifted it. 
But regardless, when you've played as well as Mintz has, you're going to get the benefit, benefit of the doubt. And it, what starts the break for Mintz was another three-point shot, a long rebound. The bond charge rule has changed this year. Defenders must establish a legal guarding position before opponents place the last foot on the floor, the plant foot. It used to be it had to be an illegal guarding position before a player takes off and goes airborne. So there have been a lot more blocks and a lot fewer charges called this year. The thought is that's going to help offense in the game. Early on, do you like the way the new block charge rule is being applied? I like it conceptually. Um, I, I don't think it's made it any easier for officials to make the call. In fact, I think a lot of calls have aired on this. It's interesting. The way it was, we had officials erring on the side of a charge. I think we're erring more on the side of a block and missing some charges. Hannibal off the offensive rebound, scores it. Trey Hannibal is a very good rebounder for a smaller player at 6'2". LSU continuing to crash the glass. Now 13 offensive rebounds. Sterling. Taylor tied up by Hannibal. Back out for Mintz. Sterling. He is not a three-point shooter. He'll drive it. He'll lose it. Hannibal the takeaway. Good minutes for him. Here's Tyrell oh. Ward. He lays it up, and LSU's back with a nine. Turnovers leading to offense. That's that oxygen for LSU. And J.J. Starling has not played well tonight. I mean, that's just a, a soft giveaway. Eight points off seven turnovers for LSU. We will um, fill in the gray areas on that block charge a little bit more when we return to the Dome. visual learners through the new block charge rule. For this, my demonstrator, all-time defender, Kevin Brown, gonna help. The way the old rule was written, the secondary defender had to slide into position before I would go airborne. So there he is. Wow, he's been bulking up. Thank you. Now the way the rule is written, he's gotta slide over before my last foot is planted. So here I come, come in. Oh, it's clearly a flop and a really, really Big time block oh. from Kevin Brown. He's dead. <laughs> I'm still sore. Is this the replay of your? Oh no, this is the play in the game. It's hard to tell based on the level of physicality. I mean, that was more of a charge than what you tried to take. I think I you know what you call what you were doing. You've been playing in foul trouble all day, my friend. You have been on the bench press, though. I could tell. Yeah. yeah. Those yeah, the, pectorals of yours. Yeah, the uh, bench press of holding a five week old. <laughs> Who needs a gym? Just get a baby. That was the play early. It was called a block against Trey Hannibal. Judah Mintz living at the free throw line. He's 13 for 15. He's got 27 of Syracuse's 43 points. The Orange with one basket from somebody other than Judah Mintz in about a 12 and a half minute span. And that is not somebody other than Judah Mintz. He does it again. He's got 29. A new career high for the sophomore from Fort Washington, Maryland. There is nobody on LSU who has taken up the challenge of trying to keep the ball in front. Hannibal's given LSU a spark off the bench. Ward, he's two. That's a little better now, ball movement wise for the Tigers. And they're starting to, to stack some offensive possessions, scoring possessions together. They just can't stop Really, Judah Mintz. All but six of LSU's points have come to the paint. Mintz gets around the McLeod screen. He's got the length of Ward on him at 6-6 right now. Mintz back from Starling. Now Reed at 6-10 fronts him. Lost the dribble. Taylor, they lost him. He does not make LSU pay. And McLeod and Bell somehow kept it in bounds, but it's Hannibal. Little three on two here. And Mintz knocks it away from right, and it's going to be Syracuse ball. Mintz doing it all. It's not a good ball handling team to begin with. I mean, they're. It's, it's, it's. I, I should correct myself. Right really knocked it away from himself. Yeah, it, Mintz stood up there. Yeah. But I mean, that was self inflicted. 13 turnovers for LSU, 16 made field goals. 
They are giving Taylor lots of space. A late closeout, a drive by Copeland, and the first basket for somebody other than Mintz in the second half. Quadir Copeland is on the board. Just four bench points for Syracuse in the game. A deep three is good for Jordan Wright. And finally, after a one for 15 nightmare of a start, a three goes down for the Tigers. Bell, that's his spot. Well, these other guys for Syracuse were quiet in the first half. Get a bucket from Copeland and there from Bell. Right off the bounce to Dean. Bell goes flying over the shoulder. And a foul against Chris Bell, his first. And here's that Copeland, Copeland bucket. And th this has been a microcosm of LSU all night. Watch Hunter Dean here. Here's the penetration, and it's just, just that's Ole. I mean, that's non-defense. And it's been like that, obviously, on Judah Mintz most of the night. But nobody from LSU has gotten in a stance, tried to keep the ball in front. Syracuse has, has had access to the rim all night long. Dean at the line now, the grad transfer from Mandeville hits the first of two. Damian Collins suffered a dislocated shoulder in the North Florida game on Friday, so Dean has been a big off the bench. The cloud will take a seat. Malik Brown returns. Up for two for Dean. Syracuse team that returned three starters, three of its top four reserves from a year ago. Four sophomore starters, a young team, growing game by game in the first year under Adrian Autry. Mintz lost it, got it back, left it short. A rare Mintz miss, but saved by Brown. Copeland shovels for Bell. Taylor didn't take it. Bell will take it. And thrown away by Copeland right back to LSU. Much to the dismay of a red hot Red Autry. We saw that expression a time or two from his predecessor in the last 47 years. Well, you gotta love it. I mean, it's, you know, his, his point is well taken. Where are you going? We got a 13-point lead, playing a team that's had a hard time scoring. You certainly don't need to be in a rush. What did you take away from the pregame chat with Red Autry? You know, he, he's trying to establish a different set of habits. You know, it's his program now, but he's trying to do it with a young team, to what you were saying a moment ago. Coming out straight! Coming out! Out of the side up, it's a jump ball. Well played by Brown, and SU has the error. And, it, you know, look, it, it, there's some guys on this Syracuse team whose body language doesn't give you a lot. You know, Chris Bell, sometimes you wonder what he's thinking. He can shoot, though. There's 4-3, and it leads to a Matt McMahon timeout. This is the largest lead for Syracuse at 16. He can certainly shoot. I mean, Chris Bell with his feet set, he is wet. And from the other side, Syracuse rolling in the dome. A full evening of ACC SEC Challenge matchups. Women's college basketball, Missouri, Virginia, Alabama, Syracuse, and Texas A&M Wake Forest to wrap it up. Catch all the action on ACC Network or streaming on the ESPN app, the ACC SEC Men's and Women's Challenge kicking off for the first time this year. Adrian Autry, Syracuse men's team on a nine to one run, all nine of the points scored by Chris Bell. And LSU is just missing three after three after three. They are two for 18 from deep. They are not a good three point shooting team typically and they have not been tonight. Mintz again penetrating. 
And a foul is going to go against LSU. Tommy Morris, he says, keep it right here. You know, when you build a defensive scheme, it starts with deciding what you're willing to give up. And, and you know, clearly Syracuse willing to give up that three to a team that hasn't shot it well all year. And at 37 percent, but it's low volume. 14 for 26 in the opener. Yeah. The it's six game sense they made five threes per game at 31 percent. It's a driving team and a team that's played around Will Baker, who Syracuse has taken out of the game. Taylor denied. There's Baker. The good defense, and Bell gets the recovery. Copeland behind the back. A little dipsy do. Cordier Copeland making magic happen. Oh, by the way, Malik Brown had the bucket. That is the secondary portion of that play. Another three hoisted. And if you're an LSU fan, you got to be feeling like it's the same possession on repeat. Two for 19 from three, and the Orange running away with it. We are celebrating V Week here at ESPN. The story of Jalen Reed, a young man who's been through a lot when we return to the Dome. More heroin than others. Jalen Reed, a terrific sophomore for LSU, is from a, a line of basketball greatness in the SEC. His dad, Justin, was an All-American at Ole Miss. Six years ago, his dad, Justin, passed away at age 35. Angiosarcoma, a blood cancer, was a phenomenal player, leading scorer in the SEC, led Ole Miss to its first Sweet 16. You could see his dad's name tattooed on the left side of his arm. His dad, Justin, under a basketball with wings there's what looks like a halo but is a letter O for a man named Omar Carter who was Jalen's trainer somebody you spent a lot of time in the gym with after his dad passed away young man who's been through absolutely the worst you could be as Taylor hits a three we get to spend some time with Jalen before practice today Chris um, an incredibly impressive young man the way he's dealt with adversity in his life was very powerful to both of us Incredibly powerful. He's a stud. And, it, you know, just asking him about the grieving process and, and losing a father who, as he told us, he was incredibly close to, he looked up to. He's just it was an impressive young man who's got, you know, obviously everything going for him. He also told us he was 5'9 as a freshman. You asked him where he got his guard skills from. Yeah. I played point guard at 5'9, he said, and then sophomore year, I was 6'7. So he is one of their better decision makers at 6'10 and now about 242 pounds. And he's had a good start to the year. Uh, you know, he, he's put on about 16 pounds of muscle in the off season. He's gotten tougher. He's going to be a good player. Nine points, ten rebounds tonight, but his team down 21. And thrown away by Ward, another turnover. 15 for LSU. Copeland, Bell, basket no. Brown's tip-in is there. A 16-1 to Syracuse surge to take the life out of the Tigers. And a little tussle after the whistle here for the frustrated Tyrell Ward. It looked like Malik Brown got took a shot in the face. You know, it's interesting. Teams coming off of Maui, if you... I don't have the data in front of me. I'm not a data guy, Kevin. <laughs> Math was never my strong suit. But I would imagine, and certainly if you look at it last year, you know, some of those teams coming out of Maui, the performance was not good. It's an, And you would understand why. I mean, the travel for certainly a Syracuse would be far to come back, it's three games, three days. A lot of teams coming off of that trip, you know, the energy in that first, second game back is not great. It's been the opposite for Syracuse tonight. I mean, they have been shot out of a cannon, out of a cannon from the opening tip. 
The ball's had energy to it. Their defense has been active. This is as good as Syracuse has looked all season. And I think, you know, look, they lose to Tennessee, Gonzaga, both teams. Seems like they didn't find anything. You know, both those teams are obviously as good, you know, as, good as anybody yeah. nationally. But the Chaminade game, just to feel good about yourself, to see the ball go through the basket, to see the ball move, other guys get involved. I thought it was an important game for them on the way out of there. And they've had great energy tonight. They had seven players in double figures. They won by 49. Now, it's Chaminade. It's a Division II team. You should do that. But a team that's lost its first two games in Maui may not have the motivation, may not be feeling great about themselves. So Adrian Autry was really impressed with that performance. And one of the big numbers is three. Judah Mintz took three shots in that game. Didn't need to force the issue in a game Syracuse is winning big tonight when Syracuse was lacking for anybody else offensively. He does force the issue. Well, and you know Judah's into the game if he's attacking the rim. You know, there are times where he can settle for Jays, and you know tonight he knew early that he was going to have it going, and getting to the foul line a big part of that. Two free throws for Jordan Wright, the team high 11 for him. Third foul on Kadir Copeland. Judah Mins with 29, a new career high, surpassing the 26 points he scored the second game of the year against Canisius. Mintz trying to break down Fountain in the lane. Swatted out by Brown, who gets his hands on so many basketballs. And Chris Bell connects at the end of it. Brown the tip, Taylor the feed, Bell the deep delivery, his fifth three. And there's Copeland, active hands again. This time it didn't work out for him. And Tyro Ward finishes, but the activity continues to be strong defensively for Syracuse. Taylor. A lot of dribbling by Wright. There's Brown again, who throws it off of Wright. Not sure anybody on the Syracuse team gets their hands on more deflections or loose balls than Malik Brown. He knows his role. He accepts his role. That's a heck of a play there. And, you know, the difference between the first half and the second for Syracuse has been these other guys around Judah Mintz contributing, getting involved. Malik Brown, who is 6'8", now with two steals tonight. He has multiple steals in all seven of Syracuse's games this year. Averaging nearly three per game. There's a telegraph pass by Copeland. Take away for Stewart. And he feeds Fountain. Derek Fountain, the 6'10 senior from Holly Springs, Mississippi with a two. Vince again going to work. Taylor. A little bit sloppier the last couple of possessions for the yards. Syracuse's 11 turnover. And J.J. Starling will take over for Copeland. It's an LSU team that has lost 12 consecutive true road games. Their only true road game in the non-conference. They were 0 and 9 last year, and they are in an abyss here in the dome. Reed posting up Brown off side iron, and it's Starling just in the game with a rebound. Taylor, another telegraph pass, and this time it's a finish for Jordan Wright. And Adrian Autry is pointing for. At least one player, Benny Williams, off his bench. With frustration mounting despite the big lead. And he'll take a timeout. Try to settle this situation down. Six in a row for LSU, trying for a late surge, but they are in jumping. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires.
conference beginning tonight. Right now, it's the SEC on top in two games. South Carolina, trying to get 6 0 into Lamont Paris. Kentucky beating Miami in the headline matchup. Georgia Tech over Mississippi State at Pitt and Missouri in a tight one in the second half at the Pete. Surprise team for you in the ACC this year. What do you think? You know, I think Pittsburgh, if, you know, coming off of what they did last year, I mean, how is it still wide open? Syracuse is seven for eight from three and a half, and Chris Bell with his sixth three point of the game. You know, if we're in a pickup game and a guy has three threes, you know, somebody's saying, get on that guy. I don't know how he's still open. How about if he has five? Anyway, to your question, Pittsburgh, if they can come back, you know, you, you do it again. Uh, and I think they have the ability to do it, even though they've turned over that roster pretty significantly. Yeah, if you haven't seen Pitt yet, uh, watch for the freshman guard, Bub Carrington, Baltimore kid who is pretty special. Blake Hinson returns as well. Panthers trying to go back to back in the NCAA tournament under Jeff Capel. Mintz, fake the pass, drives it, and scores it. He's in the 30s for the first time in his career. 31 for the terrific sophomore. And then there's that, a quick three missed by Wright. If looks could kill from the LSU sideline. Inside Mintz. And a takeaway. Brown got a hand to it again. Oh, Brown got fouled. The want two in this game. I know you said you're not a data guy. You can't measure that, but we can see which team has it. But there's no question. I mean, the, the energy from, from Syracuse all night. And I, I think you've seen it build here in the second half because other guys are starting to make shots. And offense will do that to your defensive energy. And look, there are times, I mean, we talked about the number of new faces for LSU and, and the job that Matt McMahon is, has with all of the transfers he's had to plug holes with. And they have looked fractured at times. They have looked fractured all night. I mean, they look like a bunch of individuals out there on the floor. It's a team that played well, too, in the Charleston Classic. They lost to Dayton on the last second three. They rallied to win the next two games. Beating North Texas by four, beating Wake Forest in overtime. Matt McMahon liked the way that they responded to some late game adversity. <laughs> Matt McMahon just waved off a player that was going to sub in the game. And he is as up to his wits end as we've seen him in a long time right now with LSU down by 22. Tigers have turned it over 18 times tonight. Benny Williams getting some late minutes for Syracuse. A closeout on Bell, finally. But Bell will just do that. He'll score it off the drive, and he's got 20. Reed drives it. Count the bucket for Jalen Reed. Double-double for the sophomore. You know, it was interesting talking to Matt McMahon earlier today. You know, his best teams, he's had really dynamic guards. I mean, start with John Moran. I mean, he's had some really good guards that he has coached. His best players this year are big guys. We haven't seen Will Baker play to play well tonight, and he's been horrible. And these other guards, are, they're not, again, not real skilled. And so it's been a different dynamic, I think, for Matt McMahon to try to figure out how they can be consistent offensively. And again, they didn't know if they'd have Jalen Cook, but they hoped they would have him. 20 point per game score. Point guard transferred in from Tulane. Still waiting on the result of their appeal from the NCAA for an immediate waiver. They just can't shoot right now. They're two for 21 as Williams misses a three. Syracuse, meanwhile, a team that has struggled to shoot. It's now 10 for 17 after that Bell miss. Kept alive by Brown. Inside to Williams. And Williams is rejected by Wright. Jordan Wright on the drive. Stripped by Brown. And off the kneecap of Wright. Back to the orange. May it did go off him. 
you know, Jordan Wright has not played well, and it's, you know, I think he's you know, trying to find himself offensively. His efficiency has been down, especially in their last two games. Mintz with 31. He and Bell have combined for 51. Mintz, as long of steps as you can get, make it 33. And now the Mintz Bell combination has as many points as the entire LSU team as Fountain misses a bunny. Benny Williams. The air's out of the shot clock for Mintz. So set up Williams, who is off target for three. They could use some nice late minutes for Benny Williams, who has been in and out of the lineup. Defending now against Reed, and Reed spins and misses a high point rebound for Williams. Just an utterly dominant second half. 33-28 after the first half, Syracuse with a 43-25 plus 18 advantage in the half here. Starling back from Brown. Williams, Brown, and another takeaway. Here comes Ward, and Ward is denied! High point rejection by Chris Bell. Here's Williams, back for Bell. Blocked the shot on one end, missed the three on the other. Been a while since we've had a whistle, it feels like. And Syracuse ain't slowing down. Who cares? We're up 23. Right. Two for 22 from three for LSU. What an early impressive marker this is going to be for Adrian Autry's team. Three home wins as Williams buries it from deep. The orange is 11-3. And this LSU team, much like Syracuse, is still a work in progress, but the orange starting to finally come alive in game seven of the Adrian Autry era. And this has been a heck of a show for Chris Bell. Look at that block up near the square. And then Benny Williams getting in on it. Chris Bell show, those two have scored as many as all of LSU's 10 tonight. <laughs> That's a heck of a graphic right there. I mean, what do you make of that? Uh, I make it with the Judah Bits and Chris Bell have been pretty good at basketball tonight. That's my high level analysis right there, Chris. That's why I get paid. And LSU is to draw charges from you. Hey, look. That was the highlight of your night. That was it. The charge you took. The low light of your day. <laughs> look, there are two sides to, to tangle with here in the last two and a half minutes. The LSU side, which is a couple of close losses late to Nichols and Dayton. Some tough last second losses, but a more encouraging start for that man's team after last season. They really cratered down the stretch. They've just been outworked in every way. They've Made poor decisions offensively that you pointed out. Where do they go forward from this? I know it's early in the season, so there's plenty of time to figure it out. They've got to hang their hat on defense. And I think what you saw tonight is they really struggle to guard the ball. If you don't hand it to them, if you, in other words, if you don't turn it over, you, you are going to make offense hard to come by for them. By the way, final score, the ACC-SEC men's challenge, the first game to go final. Advantage ACC, Mississippi State knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten by Georgia Tech. One nothing ACC is a strong finish comes here for Hannibal. 67-59 in Atlanta, and the ACC looks like it's about to go 2-0 to start this challenge. Now for Syracuse, probably their best performance of the year, the second half against Colgate. They were down 24, their greatest comeback win, at least since 1976. This has been the Orange's best all-around effort. And they've finally done so with some three-pointers, but it's been Judah Mintz leading the way. So did you learn anything tonight 
about Syracuse. Do you think Adrian Autry learned something about his team? Yeah, I, I think the rebounding can still be an issue because remember, they, they gave up 12 offensive rebounds in the first half. It didn't hurt them because LSU couldn't convert. But it, it gets back to the point we were making at the top with Cuse. If Chris Bell, if Justin Taylor, if these guys off their bench can impact winning in other ways, you know, then that's when this team, I think, takes another step. And, you know, certainly Mintz putting on a solo show in that first half. But in the second half, the difference has been these other guys. And he will get an appropriate ovation after 33. Hey, tip off your weekend with another star-studded NBA doubleheader. We started in Boston with the 76ers. Take on the Celtics at 7.30 Eastern, then Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets. Defending champs against Devin Booker, the Suns. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central with NBA Countdown on ESPN and the ESPN app. Peter Carey getting some run, the sophomore from Sunderland, Massachusetts. Big number 23 in orange and white. With a minute to play in a 23-point Syracuse lead. Bell with 20 points, five off a career high tonight. Here's Williams. And LSU will have a couple of possessions left in a game where Will Baker, their leading scorer, scored just three. That three is missed by Wilkinson, and the Tigers, it appears, will finish two for 23 from three-point range. A lot to work on for Matt McMahon's team which will be their 13th consecutive loss on the road as a program. For Syracuse, an explosive 40 minutes, particularly in the second half. End of the shot clock, Copeland will just hold it, take the violation. And it's time for tonight's Player of the Game, brought to you by Continental Tire. Tough call. Who could that be? What a night. I mean, what a night. He, he was all over the place. We had to get our whole crew to vote on this. It was a big tiebreaker. <laughs> Career high, 33 points for Judah Mintz. It is a bludgeoning in the ACC-SEC challenge. Syracuse swamps LSU with a huge second half, 80-57. to 